adjust tools. So we start with the sculpt bevel. This one slightly confusing. So first of all, we're creating a curve using the top curve panel. And I will, I'm doing this angulated curve, right? So across. And then usually in 3D code, if you press enter, it will do the operation. However, here's maybe a little bit of a bug. You cannot really press enter, it will create an issue. You have to press this button. So when I press it, I'll get the, the bevel. I can change this uh, profile, press it, and I get a different profile. You can play around with them, but usually you know, I don't really want to play too much with this. And if I double click on the point, double click on the point, it will remove all of them. And it will get like a chisel. If I want a slightly smoother one, I just press left mouse click here and then bevel, no, beveling on itself, but there is not much else to bevel. So let's do this. If I you know, make the size smaller, then it will be a smaller bevel. And let's uh, press that button. Get a smaller bevel, and if I go into the curve tree, we do have all these curves there, so you can play around and move the points if you need to, uh, or you can go in here and delete all these curves if you don't need them. The cutoff tool allows you to do the same thing I can do with the cutoff tool in voxels. However, in surface mode, the cutoff gives you much sharper shapes at a lower count. It can be a little bit buggy, and it can. I'm trying to create one. Okay, so we got a little bug right there, right? So we kind of like flow it in geo. So I can then cut it again and cut it away. Then if I apply soft booleans and by default the bevel divisions are set at two, we can get some softer cuts. It's more visible if I change the shape to a circular shape and do a cut like that. And it's pretty cool that we have some kind of like control over the shapes that we are doing. You can see a little box here, for example, an open hole. You can always turn it into the voxel uh, shape if you want to fix this model from uh, issues that happen during cuts. But obviously, if you are trying to make it super sharp and turn it into the voxel mode defeats the purpose. So you have to be just a bit careful about how you use this and not to over destroy mesh that will create a, too many bugs of, of the geometry. The noise function is a great way to apply noise. So I need to hit apply real time and then I'm getting you know, this kind of distorted cube. I already played around with some of these values here. So you just create new new points and move them around and see what you want to get. Obviously, I want to be fairly subtle. And I can play with the characteristic size here to change the big noise levels. You can always click save to save this noise profile if you want to reuse it for some particular uh, destruction. You can see it's a little bit blurry just because the poly count on the cube is a little bit low. And you want to have like a half a million, at least half a million triangles uh, to have a noticeable and a nice result. And you can see if you can control the amount of displacement with the displacement degree, sharpness, blurriness. See, it just will you know, kind of play, move this noise around. And yeah, you can isolate the direction of the noise by choosing the particular axis. And then once you're happy with it, what you need to do is you need to turn off apply real time and you need to click, click apply. So now it's been applied and now we've got a rocky surface. Next we have a cluster of tools in the close hole. Close hole itself, the bit of a strange tool, doesn't really do what it says. If I go and uh, turn on the wireframe mode and then make a big selection and will kind of reduce some of these polygons fairly randomly. So don't really know what to do with closed call. But there are other stuff that's pretty important. For example, a mesh doctor can remove and fix little issues on your mesh, uh, which are pretty self-explanatory here. Then we have reconstruct that if I drag 
a selection and then I can uh, uh, modify selection. I can uh, uh, grow selection here, grow or contract uh, by switching these modes. I can then hit apply and it will get you know, reconstructed and a little bit smoother and more uniform. Uh, the detail doesn't, I mean, I've played around with the detail level, doesn't really affect much. Uh, density is pretty much the same between zero and two. Then another one, clean clay, clean clay, well, it's supposed to do what it is saying, like reducing, reconstructing and everything like that, but it doesn't do anything. So I guess right now it's, this tool is a little bit broken. Uh, let's see, maybe in the newer versions of 3D code, it will do what it's supposed to do. So what we have at the moment is Mesh Doctor and Reconstruct that can help to change the mesh and how it works. Next tool we have is Fill Holes. To create a hole, I need to use the Poly Remove tool. So I'll just use a lesser to create one and then hit Apply. And there you go, we have a little hole. Then if I go and Fill Holes and I just click on that, nothing doesn't do anything, so I have to click on the mesh, it will automatically find the hole, and then I can click on close hole, and it will fill it up, fairly straightforward. Next brush is angulator, so essentially if I draw a mask around here, around there, I can create like a crease, so if I click apply, it will start to crease the mesh, and can be an interesting effect for rock, for an organic uh, character mesh. There is also an option to mask edges. So if I click on it, it will try to detect it. And it can essentially play around with the settings of the mask and find what will work for you. And so we can modify this modify this on a fly this is pretty cool and then apply it so then clear selection there we go really helps to build a rock in this case then we have dissolve it's more of a relaxed tool if i click apply it will just uh, smooth it out and dissolve the detail in, in the mesh. Subdivide is like a focus subdivision method. If I hit apply, you'll see we're getting a subdivision of that particular masked area. Measuring, essentially, if you're doing a bit more precise modeling and sculpting, there we go, we have angle, we have distance, and a whole bunch of tools you can play around and uh, poke to get the idea of the object size. 3D print supports and work slice are the same as in my video about the voxel tools. For extruding faces, I will just create uh, some masks using rectangular selection and I'll hit distance by default is zero. So you want to put it like at some like eight and then it will get its extrusion going. It can be a little bit slow and buggy for some reason. So be aware of that. The, for the bridge tool, you need two objects on one layer, so I've duplicated this object, but then I need to shift drag it on top to combine them. Then I will paint uh, something here and something there, like a mask connection. I'll create an arc uh, like that, hit apply, and nothing happened. I think I... Let me do this. And we get this. So, it has a bit of an unusual shape. If I decrease the arch down to like 30, 0 0.0, 30, apply, we get a bit of a straight line. Quick pick tool allows you to pick an object. By default, it's an A hotkey, so I don't, I doubt you will ever use the quick pick. And bar, bar relief and other cards were talked about in the voxel uh, toolset videos.